Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating a special type of composite, composite, that we call the double exposure, which I guess is why I said that word twice. You've likely seen this technique used in much of TV show intros, uh, most notably 2014's True Detective, and then a lot of shows right after that. 2014 was a good time to be making double exposures in video projects. Now, making these kinds of images in Photoshop is pretty straightforward. We just apply some masks, brush on where we want things to be. But in After Effects, we have to use a few extra layers. We have to keep things a bit more organized. So I'll be taking you through the basic setup and some of the typical techniques that we would use to make this kind of shot happen. So let's grab some clips, let's open up After Effects, and let's get exposed to double exposures. All right, so before we get here, before we make this fantastic double exposure, we need to actually gather some footage. And deciding what kind of footage you're gonna use, what kind of angles, what kind of motion that footage is gonna have, will determine a lot of how your final look comes out. So taking a lot of time and finding the right footage is essential. Now, if you're making this for a film or a TV show, you're probably gonna have a lot of clips from that show to work with. For us though, we're gonna be using some stock footage. Now we are in luck because this video is sponsored by Envato, creators of the fantastic Video Hive Marketplace, among other marketplaces. Envato is a great place where you can get very reasonably priced, very high quality footage from people all over the world. It's a marketplace where you can buy and also sell a lot of stock elements. I use them a lot in my client work because I find I can always find the footage I'm after. If you have a lot of stock video, stock audio, photo template needs, I would highly recommend you check out their Envato Elements program, which for a monthly fee gives you unlimited downloads, millions of creative assets, just like it says uh, here on the webpage. For us though, we are looking for a very specific type of video. We need a subject first and foremost, so I think we're gonna find this lovely video here. Lots of hair movement, lots of dress movement. And what I'm looking for specifically when I'm thinking about the subject that I'm going to use in my work, I'm looking for a subject I can easily separate from the background. So the blue here is gonna be easy to isolate. The red here, if we wanna do something fun and creative with that, is easy to isolate. Look for those things in the footage you're selecting. And granted, we might not always have the luxury of a nice blue sky, but if you can find green screen or chroma key footage, if you can find portrait work on a nice solid colored background, those are the best. Otherwise, you might have to do more background removal than I do. Now second, I wanted a bit of footage of some mountains. I love the craggy, harsh silhouettes of a mountain against the sky. That's what I wanted to play with in this piece. This user Kudu here had some amazing shots, hard to choose from, very textured, very interesting shots. So with our footage, it's time to get to work. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project so you can see how it goes when we start from scratch. Import your footage into After Effects, right into your project here. And when I look at them, when you check up here in your project window, you can see that they have different frame sizes, different frame rates. So the final output that we wanna do for our final composite, I'm going to create a 1920 by 1080, 24 frames a second comp. And let's put the duration here at maybe, I don't know, five seconds. That should be long enough for this tutorial. And so I want to conform these videos here. I wanna conform these things to that 24 frames a second, right? This one already is 24 frames a second. So I'm gonna drag that down. But when I play through it, I find the motion of the hair and the dress billowing a bit too fast. I wanna slow this footage down. I'm going to right click on it. I'm gonna go interpret footage, main, and then I'm gonna conform the frame rate down from 24 to 12. And right away, the footage gets longer, but you'll also notice that every other frame is exactly the same. So it's not smooth anymore, it's jerky. Well, we can get away with using this little thing here, this little frame blending tick here, you can turn on the frame blending. And if you click it just once, you can see that we get these little blended frames here, which is one way of inventing the missing frames. But give it another click, and After Effects will try to invent perfectly what it thinks the middle frame should be. No ghosts here, no thanks. Depending on how far you push it, that can actually be very smooth. So this is actually working out pretty perfectly for me. Now I'm gonna conform this video as well. It is at 29.97, but I can just go here, interpret footage, main, bring that to 24. So we are all good to start making use of these footages. 
What I want to do is make it so that the mountain is only visible where the subject is, and I want them all to hang out on a white solid. So I'll make a white solid, put it in the background, and I basically need to start cutting things out. Step one of doing the work is I need to turn our subject here into a mat. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to pre-compose it. I'm going to move all the attributes into the new composition, and I'm going to call this the mat. So now if I go into the mat, you'll notice we still have our frame blending going on. That's fantastic. And I'm going to use some effects in here to basically turn this from a full color image to really only alpha information. So I'm going to start by dropping a levels on here, bringing out the levels. By analyzing the image and looking at it, we can see that this area has a lot of blue. If you look up in the info panel up here, the B column there is 255. And then when I start hitting other things, that that blue number starts to go down. So we're going to try to use the blue channel here, which I'm going to toggle in the levels to help us out by creating a mat. And I'm going to start by pinching in the blue values to increase the difference in blueness between the most blue and the least blue things. So you notice it makes our subject quite yellow as we do that. So basically, I'm looking at these peaks and valleys, and I'm trying to put these wedges down here where we start to taper off. I still want to preserve some of the nuances, but not all of them. And now I'm going to shift the channels. So I just bring the shift channels out here, and this will let us use one channel to overwrite the others. So I can say, take the alpha information from the blue channel, please. So that means if the blue is 255, then the A, the alpha is also 255. So that's what it's doing. And then in these other areas, see the B and the A are the same number. All right. And now I'm going to take the red from fully on, the green, that's going to be full on, and the blue, that's going to be full on also. So all of those are all now fully on, but we're really only playing with the alpha value. By stripping out all those other values, we're kind of simplifying what we're looking at here. Now, depending on what footage you have, you might have to do this totally differently. You might need to use some Luma keys, or you might use the key light effect on some green screen footage. You might even need to roto some things. But for us, we can get away with this because it's just the sky. Now I'm going to use the invert effect on here. And if I invert the alpha, you notice we end up with white on the inside, black on the outside. Well, that's actually white on the inside, nothing on the outside. And all of these effects are GPU accelerated. If you're rocking a nice GPU, you should be pretty happy with the speed of this result. Finally, I like to put a Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur or however you say that word on here. Blur it out by just one pixel, heating the edge pixels, just so that we can smooth it out a little. The main thing to remember about this mat is we're not being hyper precise. Since this is going to be blended and abstract, it doesn't have to be pixel perfect all the time. So we go back into our composite here. We're going to take our mountain layer, and I'm going to rename this Mountain. We are going to put the mountain layer underneath the mat. We don't need to be looking at this, uh, let's put that actually on the top. And the mountain is now going to set its track mat to alpha mat of the layer we called mat because we're being very helpful. And now we'll make sure that we can actually see the mountain. So there you go. We've done it. We've used information from one layer to define the visible space of another. Hmm, very nice. So now we'll probably want to move this around and, and rotate it and probably scale it into position. Where, where should it go? Where is a good position for this? Well, personally, I really like the idea that maybe we could use this peak here. Maybe that could be like the top of her head. Maybe that would be an interesting thing. We have like the peak of the mountain and that's it's like the top of her head. And then this line here kind of runs into the neck. I kind of like that shape. This is a good starting place. The next thing I recommend you do is take your solid that's on the bottom, add a fill to that, and then take your color picker here and pick a color up here in this area so that these two colors kind of blend together. We're going to do a final pass on this that will knock down all these colors and really blend it in. But for now, that gets us a little bit more harmonized. So this is a double exposure. Where's the second exposure? Well, it's right here. It's her. She's going to be the second exposure. Let's duplicate the mat, put it above that, and then we're going to go track mat, alpha mat. So she's going to do the same thing. And now we're going to apply some effects to her. We're going to put a tint on her. We are going to put a curves on here, maybe lighten up her face quite a bit. So maybe we go, there we go. Now we're lightening things up, maybe like this. There we go. That's looking perfectly dynamic to me. And now we need to select which parts of her face we want to have on top of the mountain. I can just take my pen tool and start drawing some masks. So 
I'm going to start maybe uh, drawing down here. I think that we do want part of this neck to be visible since we were talking about that line flowing into that line from the mountain. So I'm just going to go start clicking and dragging and drawing. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. And then I think I'd also like her face. It's important to look at people's faces like here and you can refine this. You can click on the path to just add more points if you like. And right now I would describe this as very bad. Double exposures should use a lot of subtlety. So we're going to hit MM, call up their masks, and we're going to feather these out. So we are going to feather out that, that kind of shoulder situation out like this, feather this one here as well. This needs to be kind of tight on the face though, because I don't really want a whole lot of bleed uh, going in this direction. Maybe we only feather this at, at maybe 120, but I want to feather the rest of the face as it goes back into the mountain here. So I'm going to draw another mask. There's an even rougher, even worse mask. And this one we are going to set to subtract. And we are going to give this a feather that's way higher than 120. I don't know, like 540 or something like that. This is going to give us a much subtler blend uh, on the back there. And now you can use all your mask tools to, to shape these up and and move them around as needed. One challenge that often comes up in double exposures is that both of the clips are moving. Now, if we were doing this with a photo, we wouldn't have to worry because no elements are in motion. But if you look at the clips we have, this one is pushing ever forward. Ooh, nice, nice forward push on that. Great. And the other one, the subject is actually moving around quite a bit. So she's, she's actually going places. So we might need to actually track an element on our subject and use it to control where the mountains are moving around. What we want to do is do some tracking. We are going to go back to our composition. We are going to go here, put our playhead at the beginning, select the clip of our subject. We're going to go to our tracker window, go window tracker, hit track motion. And when you hit track motion, it uh, likes to open up your footage for you. You drag your tracker onto a point that you can track reasonably well and that is representative of the type of motion that you want. I want this kind of neck area here and this ear, it's actually a good focus for that, that as the head is moving around, this ear is gonna move. So I think that's a good spot to grab onto. I'm just gonna track forward and that is probably enough tracking data for me. Make a new null object, which is helpful. Having nulls is gonna be a big boon. I'm gonna call this mountain. And now we are going to edit the target the target is going to be mountain control, hit OK, and now hit apply and put the X and the Y onto that. So now this null will hang out on the ear. And now the mountain, the clip of the mountain will now be parented to that mountain control. It's going to be moving. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, perfect. That is working out. So it seems like this line here is now living closer to the neck area. Oh, that's great. I am happy with this. Other things that we probably want to clean up about the mountain, we probably want to feather out this space down here because that's quite a bit harsh. And then up here, we would probably feather out up here. So we can use masks to do that very simply. Grabbing our pen tool, we might be a little bit precise up here. And then we are going to come down, down into this space. I'm going to show you another way that you can manipulate the feather around the outside of one of these you can go ahead and you can grab the mask feather tool. Now, when you use the feather tool, you can click on the mask and you start dragging out. And this is now the feathered area. You notice that it dragged out all over the place. You can also click and drag onto the inside if you would like. And you can set these little handles all over the place. I actually want to tighten up up here and down here we might even loosen so that off of one mask, you can have this variable width of feather that's happening. And finally, remember this about double exposures. All we're doing is we are defining where we can see things. So we have our mountain layer, and then we've just put a layer of our subject back over top. If you want to add back in more mountain, you can just duplicate your mountain, put it up on top. It doesn't even need a track mat at all, but you could just take a mask and say we wanted we wanted more um, more mountain down here in the cheek. We wanted to use some of the mountain texture in this area. Well, I can just take my mask, have my mountain two layer selected here, and just think like, all right, well, this is the kind of patch that I want to run through, like here. So that is what I'm going to see. 
And you can use all kinds of great things. You can use a bunch of uh, blending modes. Maybe you set this to add. And then with this mask path, uh, let's use our convert vertex tool because we don't want we don't want hard shapes. That's not how we do like this. And then we just feather that thing out like crazy. Kaboom. And then we start tweaking the opacities of everything. So we just start bringing the opacity of that down like Oh, it just adds a little bit of a little bit of a little lightness in there. It's all a balancing act. It's a lot of playing around. Another thing I would recommend you do is create a new null object and call this subject control. And now anything that pertains to the subject, which is going to be this mat, this mat, uh, this mat, those should all be parented to the subject control. The mountain control, because it's attached to her ear, should be attached to the subject control as well. So now if we want to move this whole situation around, maybe reframe this a little better, you know, get her right in here. If we were going to put titles back here over there, we want to be able to move this whole mess around. So that's why you want the subject control. Finally, we need to put some adjustment layers on here to tamp all of this down. So I'm going to make a new adjustment layer, put it on top. And really all we need on this is a curves and a tint. The tint we might dial in at like 60 or something. And these curves, we might just just blow them right out to make this nice and bright. So now that we've got it all composed, we want to think about movement. So you can see how the movement of that mountain footage really feels like we're being drawn into the subject here. So what I'm going to do is make a new null object, so many nulls, and call this total control. And I'm going to parent the subject control to that. And then what I'm going to do is call up the scale of this. And I'm just going to scale it up. A little bit over the whole course of this. So I'm setting a keyframe at the start at like 100%. And then we're scaling in, we're getting closer to our subject. Do, 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 do. How fun is this? Now, this is just a basic pass. The sky is the limit with this kind of thing. The main core of it, though, is like I've said a couple times, using mats to define the visual space. And of course, you'll have a lot of challenges unique to whatever kind of footage you choose to work with. But hopefully this brief exposure to double exposures has helped. Well, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and for spending some time with me here on the EC Abrams tutorial channel. I hope you had fun learning these things and now you're able to go out and make some double exposures of your own. Again, I want to thank this video sponsor Envato and their wonderful marketplace video hive. We have affiliate links in the description below for not only the marketplace, but also the Envato elements program where you can have unlimited, unlimited access to all kinds of stock elements for a yearly subscription. They have so much music and sound effects and videos and photos. You should definitely check with the marketplace if these are the types of things you use in your productions. If you need help with any of the techniques that we talk about in this video, please let me know in the comments and I will try to get you through. I try to answer all the comments when I am able. And if you make something with this, I would love to see it. Tweet it at me, tag me on Instagram. I'm at EC Abrams on both those platforms. And if you enjoy what you're seeing on this platform, then please subscribe and turn on notifications. It helps the channel out a lot. And since we're putting up tutorials all the time, you won't miss any of them. We also do a few live shows just about every Friday. We have something going on on this channel. So make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss out. But that's it for me. I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.